video, where do I want to even start? The fake frames, the false advertisement, heck, the entire 50 series. It felt like just a few years ago we were rooting for Team Green to push the industry forward, but now all they seem to be doing is pushing the ship backwards. To that I ask, where did this all begin? Let's go back to the summer of 2018, or winter if you're like me, in the cool southern hemisphere. Nvidia had just came off one of the best, if not the greatest generations of graphics cards ever, releasing the 10 series cards. This features the legendary 1060, which is the 11th most popular GPU according to the Steam hardware survey, and the 1080 Ti, the ultimate flagship that can still beat some modern GPUs. On the happy gamer scale, we were sitting at about 9 or 10. How would they follow this up? Simple, by going down a path nobody ever thought of. Starting with a montage demonstrating the power of innovation in the film and video game industry, Jensen walks out onto stage with his infamous lead jacket. He shocks the audience when he announces that this event would not be for the rumoured GTX 1680. However, instead in a nearly two hour event, one so gruelling that even Jensen had to take his jacket off, we were introduced to Graphics Reinvented, with the all new Turing based 20 series cards most notably featuring all new ray tracing and tensor cores. I'll talk more about tensor cores later, but the main focus of this event was on the ray tracing cores. These new cores were designed to power a new type of rendering, much different from typical rasterization. Instead, the focus was on detailed reflections and lighting, offering a way of rendering that rendered individual arrays of light, extending upon the recently founded global illumination technology. An event mostly focused on not gameplay, and we're 50% faster than this, but an event focused on the future. And well, that future looked full of bright rays. Now, to say that the 20 series cards were just a little rushed, that would be a little bit of an understatement. From the announcement to the launch, everything seemed stable. That was until gamers realised that there were no games to play that supported these new ray tracing capabilities. They did however live up to the performance comparisons made to earlier cards, performing solidly. The 2080 was roughly the same as a 1080 Ti, and the 2070 was roughly between a 1080 and a 1070 Ti. This newfound performance would come at the cost of heat and power, of which would become a bad trend heading into later generations. These cards did have a few surprises however, with phenomenal overclocking capabilities due to their overbuilt cooling and thermal solutions for these cards. This generation also had the RTX 2060, which is still the ninth most popular GPU amongst gamers. On the happy gamer scale, the ship remains steady around a 7. A lot happened between 2018 and 2020. Quite frankly, the world transformed in what seemingly was overnight. The COVID lockdown meant that everybody was stuck at home, even Jensen himself. So when it came back around to GPU season again, we were greeted by a familiar face. But somehow we were in his kitchen? We were first introduced to the 30 series with the 3080, the successor to the 28. But behind closed doors, Nvidia was cooking up something special. In fact, fresh from the oven, the all new 3090. The 3090 by itself was a showstopper of a car, not yet to mention the later TI version. It packed performance in between 30 and 40% better than the 2080 TI, the best RTX card made by Nvidia up until this time. This event at launch was all the buzz, with cards like the RTX 3070 being comparable to the 2080 TI at effectively half the price, if these cards ever sold at retail. More on that in just a few seconds. On the happy gamer scale, we're back up to a 9, with Team Green in front and in charge. Reminder how I said if these cards ever sold at retail, that'd be phenomenal. Well, they didn't. In late 2020, the storm was brewing, first started by a silicon wafer shortage, meaning a reduced supply in all these new 30 series cards. No problem, right? Due to multiple factors such as an early crypto crash and interest rates being at an all-time historic low, crypto shot up. Between September 2020 and February 2021, Bitcoin went from $14,000 to $70,000. This led to massive crypto farms being created and can you guess what power them? Graphics cards. Turns out due to their many cores being able to run many simple instructions simultaneously, these graphics cards were extremely effective at mining cryptocurrency. This coinciding with the launch of the 30 series cards led to mass scalping. Seemingly every single crypto farm would be ready to gobble up any GPUs and any remaining GPUs would be left for scalpers to sell for a double and even sometimes triple the MSRP. This led to nobody being able to get their hands on these cards, not without paying a hefty tax. 
and this was not just a problem exclusively for the 30 series. It also extended to earlier generations like the 20 series cards as well. On the Happy Gamer scale, we set around a 5. Well, two years passed quickly, and it seemed like in unison as gamers, we were all hoping for some good competition from AMD, who made a statement with their last generation, Intel, who were finally tossing their hat into the ring with this generation, and Nvidia. And for gamers, we got our answer very quickly. Yes, that is a $1,600 price tag on a graphics card. Nvidia's strategy was clear this generation. Slaughter AMD so they could charge whatever ridiculous prices that they liked. And safe to say, on the performance side at least, it worked. The 4090 was untouched throughout this generation, albeit for its price tag it was certainly not worth it for most gamers. AMD continued to compete well within the mid-range, and the big topic this generation was VRAM. VRAM is the graphics card's dedicated memory, holding all sorts of textures and changes as a frame buffer to ensure that games run smoothly. With games becoming more and more demanding, so did their textures, especially at much higher resolutions, with 1440p gaming finally becoming mainstream over the past few years. This meant higher VRAM was better. However, Nvidia forgot about this. 8GB of VRAM on the 4060 was seen as the bare minimum, affecting its performance at higher resolutions. Now, it's not to say that these were the only problems with this generation. To start, we were faced with the infamous 12V high power connector, and its issues with wanting to burn. These little cables would result in issues, especially when not being plugged in properly, and they would get hot quick, melting away, causing damage. The performance increase seen by the 4090 over the 3090 did not continue across the board either, only extending to the 80 class lineup. While the 70 and 60 class cards were left with only a 20% increase compared to last generation, the pricing and problems of this generation meant it wasn't received too well, but at least it was something compared to the most 30 series, and this generation would only become better towards the end of its life cycle. On the Happy Gamer scale, we sit around a 6 or a 7. So, you know how I mentioned TED scores way back with the 20 series? Well, they're sort of important within this 40 series generation, and more specifically to the company that Nvidia now is. Tensor cores are designed with the purpose of being able to run machine learning operations quickly and effectively. These tensor cores would be the same ones that would go on to make Nvidia the 3 trillion dollar company that they are today. Due to their efficiency and power and machine learning workloads, these tensor cores were extremely effective at training and running AI models. The rise of AI large language models such as ChatGPT would not be possible without this technology. This was also beginning to show in Nvidia's business model and their gaming cards. DLSS 3 was introduced within this generation as a way to increase frame rate. This was powered by an AI model that would take a lower resolution version of the current frame in the previous frame to produce a series of frames that would fall in between. This technology would be the starting of the fake frame scandal that Nvidia would operate for its next two generations, boosting raw numbers to overinflated AI assisted frame counts. Now, you might love this technology, but for those who still care about latency, and the power that they pay for, they would much rather see higher raw performance than a fake AI number. Now on the business side of things, Nvidia was pushing hard and strong to make the most of this AI boom, releasing many data center GPUs, including its Grace Hopper based super chips that shaped the data center industry into what it is today. This caused Nvidia to grow rapidly with the stock price jumping from $13 in September of 2022 to $140 in October of 2024, in just as little as two years. It became very clear where Nvidia made their money from from then on. In this two year stretch, gaming shrunk from 50% of their business to only 15. 2025 rolled around and the lights were on in Vegas for CES. So much so that even the jacket got a surprise upgrade. And now appear Jansen. In an hour and 30 minute event, GeForce only got 12 minutes. And it's safe to say that this is not what we expected. But wait a minute. The 5070 provides 4090 performance? What the f Confused about this statement, we all somehow knew that there was some level of AI trickery going on, and that trickery was DLSS4. And yes, this gameplay you see here is the real reason why they're able to claim 4090 performance. Now, some people don't mind the latency and the small artifacting in their gameplay, I would rather have the frames instead. And this is the point for the company that is supposed to lead us to where we go next. We saw it all with ray tracing. May we now see it with frame gen and upscaling? Now, the alleged 5070 performance claims were not the only point of conflict from Nvidia within this generation. 
The first started while we were all patiently waiting to get our hands on this new mega launch of the slim and beautiful 5090. Wait a minute, where is it? Yes, that's right. Nvidia fought us all, the stock numbers as low as single digits in some stores. It's alright, it's alright. I guess I'll just go buy a 40 series card instead. Yes, this is perfect. The lack of 50 series graphic cards combined with the cease in production of the 40 series cards means that we're going into the good old times of a GPU shortage again. But for those who got them, surely they're good and not full of problems. Well, I'm sorry to break your heart Tim Green, but the problems did not stop. To start, there were driver problems which took several updates to patch out a well-known black screen bug. Then the issues heated up, quite literally. The 12 volt high power connector was back to cause problems again, ready to turn into the sun and melt at any time. And this became particularly bad as the power draw was even more extreme on these cards compared to the last generation. Ouch. Well, at least the competition still did worse, hey? Intel and AMD doubled down and decided not to release any direct competitors to the flagship of the 5090, instead choosing to beat Nvidia within the mid-range instead. And for me to say that both of them are currently beating Nvidia is a devastating blow for Team Green. Intel came out and resurrected its graphics card lineup with its all new Battle Mage cards. The B580 proved that Intel was no longer slacking where it was once lacking, and it offered some of the best performance we have ever seen for this budget price tag. AMD saw the hellscape of the false claims of the RTX 5070's performance swooping in with the 9070 XT, directly competing and beating Team Green. This one-man show quickly turned into a three-horse race, of which quickly began to swing against the favour of Nvidia. Now, to make things even worse, Nvidia began shipping out defective graphics cards with missing performance. Some unlucky buyers of the 50 series cards have noticed that their cards are missing ROPs, affecting what Nvidia claims is half a percent of 5090 and 5070 Ti graphics cards. Yikes. And to top it all off, the most recent launch of the 60 series lineups confirms our worst nightmare about VRAN skimping. Although cheaper than the last generation, 8GB Nvidia? Seriously, I'm sure it'll be fine if you actually showed us how this card performs because I'm not lying in saying that pretty much nobody got their hands on these for review. Uncle Linus gives a great evaluation on the status that this launch has left reviewers in, and I strongly recommend that you check his video out. That brings us to present day. On the happy game scale, we're sitting at a miserable three. What is next for Team Green? It seems like the company that was so focused on the gamer has disappeared behind a faint mist of an AI revolution. It's clear that Nvidia's primary focus is no longer on gamers. All we can hope for is that Intel and AMD make the best graphics cards possible to make a big dent in Nvidia's colossal market share. A reminder, competition is what drives this industry forward and empowers the consumer to select the best product rather than the only product. Now, this one goes to you guys. How do we want to see Team Green change? For watching if you enjoyed the video give it a like it recommends it to others leave a comment if you have a question and subscribe if you want more like this but in the meantime as always stay posted